As you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, let me just give you a brief uh, overview. And then, right, we're going to look at, we're going to focus on 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 5 to 10. Amen. But, you know, before we do that, you know, here, right, Paul had already, right, you know, you know Paul made three missionary journeys. And as he made the missionary journeys, uh, you know, he always encouraged, right, people in their relationship with the Lord. Amen. People, right, in, even, right, in the area of giving as well. And so, right, uh, the church in Jerusalem was really going through a struggle. And so there was a need to be met. And so when Paul, right, you know, on his third missionary journey, he went, he always encouraged the churches uh, to bless uh, the churches in Macedonia. Uh, Macedonia, uh, uh, the three churches in Macedonia was the uh, church uh, in Philippi, in Thessalonica, and also Berea. And then, right, you know, Corinth was in the province of Achaia. And so, right, you know, wherever he went, you know, Paul always encouraged, you know, encouraged them to give towards the need. Come on, someone say give towards the need. No? Amen. And so, you know, he went, you know, and so as you look at this, right, uh, this was not, uh, he had already visited Corinth before. And the church in Corinth, the Corinthians had already promised to give to meet the need. You know, they already made a decision. You know, they had a passion to help uh, the need in Jerusalem. And so they already made a decision to give. But the problem was, they had not given yet. And so Paul, right, at this point, was probably in Macedonia. And so now he's writing his letter to the Corinthian church to encourage them to give. Amen. And so, right, you know, uh, of course, right, you know, on the earlier part, in the, uh, you know, before chapter 8, right, he was talking to them, he was encouraging them about other issues. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, you know, it is one of the most wonderful scriptures on giving. You know, I was reading as I was preparing this message. You know, someone, uh, you know, there was a preacher that said, right, you know, uh, some of you know cirrhosis of the liver. Have I pronounced it correctly? Huh? Cirrhosis of the liver. Okay, you all, you know, uh, that's a problem where, you know, sometimes people go through liver problems. You know. But this preacher says, this preacher says, right, cirrhosis of the giver. And, you know, and sometimes, right, as you look uh, at the body of Christ, right, you know, uh, we give to so many things, right? Uh, you know, we give, right, you know, you know, we pay so much things, right? At the appointed time, right, uh, when April, end of April comes, we give to the Malaysian government. Amen. You know, and so many times, right, you know, we, you know, uh, we go to the mall, we spend on things. And yet, right, you know, sometimes when it comes to giving uh, to the Lord, we have this problem of cirrhosis of the giver. You know, we find it so difficult, right? You know, to take the wallet and to give, right? And of course, right, they say the best and, uh, you know, the, uh, the key to this overcoming cirrhosis of the giver is that you need, amen, to have a, a heart change. Uh, our heart needs to be changed. Why? Because God is a giving God. Right? And then you need to have a daily dosage of... You need to have a daily dosage of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 5 to 10. Okay, if you're going to look at that scripture, you know, wonderful portion of scripture. And so you look at, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, right? You know, I just want to run through some things here with you. Amen. And then right, we're going to focus on the five verses. Amen. You know, he who has just let him hear. Why? Because giving is such an important part of our life. Amen. As you look, right, you know, uh, people that were givers. Amen. You know, people, right, that God prospered. And here, right, you know, Paul was making an appeal. Amen. To the church in Corinth. Amen. Okay, when I lift my hand, you need to say, you need to give. Reason number one. Amen. In, you know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, it says, right, giving is, a, you know, giving is a grace of God bestowed on us. You know, and here, right, you know, he starts off by saying, right, you know, when we give, right, it is really a manifestation of the grace of God. Amen. We stand here saved by grace. And everything that we do in life is because of His grace. And here, right, you know, when you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, amen, it always, when it mentions the word grace, it is speaking about the grace of giving. Okay, that was reason number one. Hey, come on, you guys. You've got to help me preach this. Though. Reason number two. Amen. It is in, uh, uh, in 2 Corinthians chap, uh, chapter 8, verses 2 to 5. Though. Amen. Here, right, you know, Paul begins to tell them, of course, right, you know, the Macedonian church, uh, the church in Philippi, the church in Berea, the church in Thess Thessalonica, Thessalonica, you know, they were really giving churches. And here, right, you know, Paul was just, right, encouraging them. Paul was telling Corinth, you need to give. Why? Because look at the Macedonian churches. Come on. You know, 
you know, Korean church in Korean, look, right, you guys need to give. Look, just see, right, the example of the Macedonian churches. You can go back and read, right, uh, chapters, uh, ch- chapter 8, verses 2 to 5. Right? Amen. How did the Corinthian, how did the Macedonian churches give? You know, some of the words here, just take note. There are 10 things, you know, we can see about giving in the Macedonian church. Amen. The first one, they gave in great trial. Who says, right, you know, everything needs to be fine and nice before you can give? Right? That one, the Macedonian church gave in great trial. You know, the, the, the Bible says that right, they gave in abundance of joy. Right? Amen. That's why, right, you know, later on in, when we will see, right, you know, we need to give joyfully. Right? The Macedonian church gave in deep poverty. Right? Amen. You know, they were really, right, struggling financially, but they saw the need, they were touched by the need. And, you know, as, as they were touched by the need, they had a desire to give. Right? Amen. So they gave, right, as what they could give. Right? The fourth thing, right, you see here is they gave in generosity. They were generous in their giving. Right? The fifth thing, right, you know, the Bible says, right, in these three verses, they gave beyond their ability. Uh, uh, the, the sixth thing, they gave willingly. The seventh thing, they gave in urgency. Amen. You know, in, uh, the eighth thing, right, they gave to meet a need. The ninth thing, right, they gave in yieldedness to God. Amen. Why? Because, you know, our giving, uh, bef- uh, the, the, our, the, the, uh, the basis of our giving is the giving of ourselves first to the Lord. And then, right, the tenth reason is they gave knowing the will of God. And so that's the second reason. The second that you need to give, you know, to the church in Corinth. Now, come on, look at the example of the Macedonian church. Hello? Come on, everybody help me. Okay, reason number three. In chapter 8, verse 7. You need to give. Come on, you know, he was telling them, come on, hey, Corinth, uh, church in Corinth, man, you are so great, right, in your faith. You excel in faith. You excel in your speech. You excel, right, in your diligence. You excel in your love for us. Come on, you need to excel in your giving as well. You know, it's just amazing, right? You know, as you look at the Bible, right, how, right, the Holy Spirit anoints Paul and how, right, these truths come out, right, and the way, right, you know, they are, you know the truth is presented, amen, you know, so that the main commandment or the main instruction is met. Now. You need to give, now. Uh, chapter 8, verse 8. Now. Giving is your test of sincerity and love, now. Come on, as parents, right, we've got, uh, we've got our own family. And we will do anything for our kids, right? You know, we will give, right? If they need they have, uh, education, we will give. Amen. In the spiritual family as well, right? You know, we are family. We are brothers and sisters. We need to give. Right? Why? Because giving shows our sincerity and love. Right? You know, it is said, right, when we are give. Come on, when we give, right, we, co- we, we become agents of the love of God. Right? Can I hear an amen? Right? Amen. You know, when we give, right, you know, our giving is as though, right, we are becoming agents of the love of God. Amen. Reason number five, blah. in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. And then here it speaks, we will we, we read the scripture. Blah. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. You see, there was a great exchange that took place. You know, of course, right, you know, for me, as I look at the scripture, I mean, it is, I mean, it is more than material blessing, blah. Because sometimes, right, you know, people use the scripture and, you know, they say material blessing. But for me, right, it means, right, you know, uh, more than just, right, the realm of the material or the realm of the finance. You see, right, Jesus, you know, was rich. He was in heaven. You know, when he came here, right, he took the form of a human being. You know, he, right, you know, took every form of poverty that you can so that we, through him, right, can experience his abundance. Amen. So reason number five from 2 Corinthians chapter 8 is that you, you need to give because of what Jesus has done for us. And then, right, as you move to uh, chapter 9, amen, another five reasons. Of course, there are more than 10 reasons in these two chapters. But I'm just, you know, looking at just the main reasons. Amen. Uh, in, in, in chapter 9, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have abundance for every good work. You need to give. Why? Because, right, you know, uh, you need to give. Why? Because giving releases the blessings of God. Come on, can I hear an amen? Re- giving, right, releases the provision of God. Amen. And so you need to give. Reason number seven in chapter 9, verse 9. You know, it's really interesting as you look at this portion. As it is, as it is written, He has dispersed abroad. Uh, he has given to the poor His righteousness and just forever. Amen. As you give, right? Amen. You know, here the scripture says, right, you will receive, right, you know, spiritual reward. The Bible says, right, your righteousness endures forever. Reason number eight, uh, chapter nine, verse 12. You know, the Bible says, 
uh, for the administration of the service not only supplies the needs of the saints. When you give what happens, right, you meet the needs of the saints. Uh, that is reason number eight. You need to give. Why? Because the needs are met. Reason number nine. Uh, look at verses nine, uh, chapter 9, verse 13. And when the Bible says, right, uh, while through the proof of the ministry they glorify God for the obedience of your confession, the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. And so as you look, right, you know, uh, firstly, you look, uh, they glorify God. As you begin, you need to give. Why? Because it glorifies God. You need to give. Why? Because it is really, right, a result of your obedience to Christ. Lord. Ten reasons. I know there's more than ten reasons here, right? But I'm just bringing ten reasons here for you. Amen. Why? Because this was how, right, you know, Paul wrote uh, as he was writing this letter to stir the Corinthian church to give. But this morning, right, we're going to look at just uh, verses 6 uh, to 12. Lord. Verses 6 to 12. Lord. Amen. As you look at verse 6, amen, I want to really challenge you. Why? Because, you know, as I stand here, my wife and I, as we, over these years, right, you know, I came to know the Lord in 1976, Amen. You know, when studied in England, came back. When we came back in 82, we got married in 83. Amen. And, you know, and these are principles, right, that we have really, uh, you know, striven or strive for whatever word that you use. Amen. But we are, you know, these were principles that we, you know, when we got married in 83, right, we established it. The first principle was, amen, the minimum requirement, you know, for our giving, right, is our tithes. And I remember, right, at that point, working as an engineer, time scale B engineer, 1120. The famous 1120. Amen. And we survived on 1120. But one of the first things that we did was we set that aside. Na. Amen. Why? Because tithes, that belongs to God. Na. Amen. Of course, right, uh, and that goes to our local church. And every other giving, right, you know, of course, right, you know, don't be, as in Penang, they will say, don't be kiam siap la. Yeah, with God. La. You know, and so, right, man, you know, that goes. But every other giving, offering, and all that, right, you know, it's soon. And then, right, you know, next, uh, next step that brought a change in our life was uh, Shantri was working as a marketing manager. And then, right, Rima was about to be born. And then we had to make another tough decision. Amen. You know, and of course, right, we made it together, Shantri. Amen. And uh, Shantri quit a job to become a homemaker. And here, right, you know, we had to raise up family just on my salary. But, you know, even at that point, right, we made that decision. Amen. Tights and be generous. You know, be generous. And, you know, and God saw us through. At that point, come on church, at that point, amen, as she made the decision, she quit, amen. You know, just amazing, Internaga National. You know, sometimes, right, you know, you need to have the right qualification in Tanaga to get your promotion. But I got my promotion early. Lah. You see, right, you know, one of the things, right, of a financial breakthrough, uh, three things, and I'm talking about giving here today, right, but just remember these three things, right, obedience. Come on, someone say obedience. Yeah. Hey, come on, say obedience a bit loudly, lah. More than the money, right? God wants your obedience. Whatever, right? No, never make, you know, of course, right? You know, finance can be, uh, you know, when you're making a decision for job, of course, finance can be uh, a, a criteria in the decision. But obedience is the priority. Lo. Amen. Don't, you know, for me, right? You know, some of the tough decisions that we made. Amen. You know, quitting as an engineer, becoming a pastor. And then in 1909, uh, quitting as a pastor, becoming an evangelist. Not easy to be an evangelist in Malaysia. And then, right, you know, moving from KL, from KL to Jawa Baru. That was also another uh, obedient decision. Not a financial decision, but an obedient decision. And, you know, at all points, right, you know, that's why, right, as I share this message, it's us. Amen. You know, how we have seen, right, you know, just God. Lah. You know, you, want to see, you know, the greatest financial breakthrough I had. When did that take place? Lah? What do you guys think? And there was silence. Turn the lights off. Every eye closed. You know. <laughs> the, greatest, uh, the greatest financial breakthrough you know, for our lives is when I went full-time. You know. Can you believe it? You know.